I have a, a little love scene in, in Booksmart. I spent years as an actor doing love scenes and I know that they're a nightmare and I tried to make them comfortable. But I do think there's something about like a woman directing intimacy and sensuality is different through the female gaze. That I agree with. I was sensitive to the fact that like when I'm holding the camera and filming a love scene, I don't want it to feel like the camera is lasciviously looking at the characters, but more like trying to make the audience feel like they are one of the characters mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and like emotionally connected. There may be certain actresses that are more comfortable with a woman who's their friend behind the camera. Yes. A woman, like, get the camera up in your face, it almost feels like a little bit less maybe like an audience. Yeah. And more like a support, potentially. Do you think that stories are told differently if they're told by women? Like, specifically, do you think Handmaids would have been very, very different if directed by a man? I think in the case of Handmaid's Tale, like, that actually specifically would be a little different if told by a woman. However, in general, my belief is that there are some you know, male directors that will direct a movie more sensitively than a woman and then vice versa. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually believe it's an individual. It just depends on the person. Do you have an issue with being referred to as a female director rather than a director? It's interesting because like, we have to harness the power of the movement of female directors to force studios to greenlight more films directed by women. So, in, 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 But then I also don't want us to be subcategorized in a way that makes us feel like a, a sort of a, a niche market, because it's not. It's just a director is a director. But there is an undeniable power to owning the identity of female director so that there can be a movement around that which will force studio heads to actually commit to more films directed by women. Well, I mean, I think it is one of those things where I say it all the time because coming up as a cinematographer. Right. I was always referred to as a female cinematographer. Right. I get called to do female jobs. Like, you right. know, um, and as a director, I get, I always get sent the movie that's about a female story. And I'm like, well, what, what if I want to tell a male story? Men mm -hmm. have been telling female stories forever. Mm -hmm. There's a caveat to it. You're a director, but you're a female director. Right. I don't like to sit there and be like, oh, it's so hard for me because I'm a female filmmaker. And, I never get treated the same and all this stuff, but actually I feel that it gave me an edge and because I was a bigger fish in a smaller pond, so to speak, of there's uh -huh. only so many female cinematographers and so many female directors at a certain point in time, then you have an opportunity to stand out more and potentially have like a leg up on your male counterpart because mm. there's less of you. Right. And then in the, on the other hand, it's reductive in a way that makes it feel almost like a sort of backhanded compliment. It's like, you're a great female director. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but if we put you in the larger pond with the dudes, does that make you less valuable? Right. Further step into this world is like, what do you do as a director and a mother? My kids are little and I wanted them to be on set, but I was also adamant about proving that I wasn't gonna waste any time because I was a female director and a mother. At some point I'd said in an article that I just was so upset about leaving my kids for that long. And someone written in a comment saying, this woman's an idiot. No, nothing's more important than your children. And I wanted to be like, it's not a handicap to be a mom. No, like, but does it know. mean we have to change the structure of the kind of schedule and environment of set? Like for instance, like I've never worked for Adam Sandler, but lots of people tell me he has set school because right. he really values his kids and family and he wants the crew to be able to bring their kids too. So no, no matter where they're shooting, he sets up set school and everybody can bring their kids and they take like so long lunches great. and everybody has their kids there. And of course these are giant budget movies. Like I'm not gonna get away with that. Well, I mean, I think it's definitely a personal thing because it's also about how much can you multitask. And when my right. kids come to set, I love it. But they, I also, they're older now. They're older, so they're not they like, be, Yeah, they go like hang around and go around with people. Sometimes they sit at the monitor with me and they yeah. ignore what I'm doing. And I'm like, guys, did you like that take? And they're like, uh, like on their computer, like, okay, mom, yeah, we <laughs> should I move on? Yeah. Like, Whereas Daisy yes, just wants to hold my cheeks and stare into my eyes. And if I look away, she's like, no, no, don't look away. Yeah. Look at me, mommy. And I'm like, it's just hard to direct this movie if I have to stare into your eyes. When they were that age, that's what was, that was hard. And I think it's not, it doesn't make you a bad person if you're like, okay, I really do need to get some work done. So I'm going to need to not. Doesn't make you a bad person here. at all.
you hired me and I'm, you also hired a person who's a mother. Yes. And if you want me yes. to direct your film, this is how it's gonna be. I think it's about women being unapologetic about saying like, yes, I'm so skillful, I'm so unique, you should hire me, here's some caveats, here's some, some specific things I'm gonna need. Like there's this notion that because we're women directors and in the minority, we should just be happy to be here. And yeah. I notice that I do it myself where I'm like overly accommodating yes. to requests that I would stand back for a second and be think to myself, if. If I was one of the male directors I used to work for, they would have never went for this. Mm -hmm. Never. We have to stop doing that. That's actually a big problem, and I think that we are perpetuating it. Yeah. Not anymore. Yeah. Not after this combo. I definitely noticed at a certain point that I had a babysitter. There was like a studio person who was like, I was like, why, are, why is he always here? And yes. then I realized like, oh, he's here in case I drop the ball. He's here as a safety net. Yep. And is this safety net because this is my first feature directing gig or is this a safety net because I was just not quite sure I as a woman can handle this? And it was like very hard to tell because there was times where I felt like my authority was questioned and luckily I had the most incredible crew, half of whom were men who would stand up for me. But it was an interesting challenge for me to overcome because I had to really stand up for myself and it also, it seeped into the kind of creative direction of the film because it's a comedy starting, starring women. And we both know that in order for women to be funny, they don't have to smile all the time. Right. But there were certain kind of notes about like, we need them to smile more. Oh yeah, yeah. I and it's like, <laughs> it's very hard for an actress to play a harder character, yeah. a stronger, more. Likeability. If they have to be more likable than men. It's like in time. politics. It's because every female character that I've ever directed, it's been like, we're just going to need her, make sure you get a take where she's smiling. I'm like, but why would she be smiling right here? You know, she's like... It's the equivalent of when you walk down the street in Manhattan and someone's like, smile, it's not so bad. And you're yeah, like, I want to kill you. I want to smile your face off the wall. <laughs> no, but it's like, that's another big, huge problem. But it's all sort of connected to the same... Yes, thing. it is. Yeah. It is, but I think that's why women as storytellers, even though it is based on individual visions and skill, women as storytellers can work to counteract that kind of like subconscious understanding of what a woman needs to do in order to communicate certain emotions. Right. Like we can end the idea of women having to smile. Yeah. Between us, no more women smiling. No more women smiling. <laughs> Unless they're smiling over someone's cold, dead body. Exactly. That's the only No time. smiles.